All right, everybody, welcome back for day two of the chessboard build. Uh, I just got back from the job interview I was telling you guys about. It was a pretty crazy interview process. I actually had to go out there twice. Um, the first time to do some uh, on-hands testing, and then this time for the actual interview part, it was like a three-hour process total. We'll see what happens. Um, so that's why I am dressed like this. You know what? Let me get out of this. All right, now that we've changed clothes, uh, let's get back to it. Oh wait, one more thing. All right, there we go, there we go. All right, so let's get back to it, see what we did last night, catch up back up where we were, and see what we're gonna do today. Let's get back to work. So we left off yesterday, getting our glue up for our chessboard jig done. Um, as you recall, I'm sure it's only been a couple seconds for you. Uh, we had a couple of the pieces come apart due to lack of wood glue because we ran out of wood during the initial glue up. So I went ahead and got those repaired. So let's see how those came out. So I essentially just glued these up individually. I put the big piece of mahogany over them to keep them flat overnight. <laughs> but basically I just put glue on the where they came apart and clamped each one individually. So let's go ahead and take these clamps off and see how these look. All right, so there we go. Looking like we're good now. Just needed that little bit of a fix up. All the rest of them are good to go. So we should be good today to go ahead and take our jig out of here. We know this is good and dry. We'll go ahead and get these flipped and shaped into the right shape and uh, get them glued up. That's pretty much all we're gonna do today. It's not gonna be a whole lot going on. So I'm gonna go ahead, I forgot the parchment paper upstairs. Like I told you guys, I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper in between the wood and the board when I glue it up so the glue doesn't glue the pieces together. Uh, if the parchment paper is glued to the board, that's no problem, we just sand it off, easy peasy. So I'm gonna run back upstairs, grab the parchment paper. Uh, we'll get all these strips flipped the way they're supposed to be and get them glued up. All right, so we got our parchment paper. We got all of our strips here, including our one extra. So I'm gonna go through real quick, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip and rotate and look at all of these and just figure out which eight look the best, get rid of the one I don't need, and then just see, try to just line it up so the grains look like they're all running the best, just to make it, give it its best aesthetic. So I'm gonna sit here and play with getting it all lined up the way I want it, um, taking this thing apart, and then we'll get these flipped and glued up and then we'll be working on the sanding and stuff like that tomorrow. Looks like I got this glue up done just in time. The battery on the camera is about to die. As you can see, it's a little bit of a pain in the ass to glue one of these up and get all the clamps on there. Uh, but we got her good. This should get us a pretty flat board. It'll still have to have some work done to it after this. Um, but we'll get into that uh, tomorrow. So we're just gonna let this sit for the night, get dried up, and we'll get back down here tomorrow and get back to work and see what the next steps will be. See you guys tomorrow. All right, here we are back for day three. Um, I've already taken all the clamps off of the board. As you can see here, we're left with a nice flat board as far as the level of it goes. But as you can see, if I get closer here, maybe. Yeah, there you go. You can see all, we got all this glue on here. All this glue, we got some peaks and some valleys. That's always gonna happen as far as I can tell. So that's on both sides, got a bunch of glue, it's messy, it's got peaks and valleys all over the place, just doesn't look very good. Other than the fact that it is nice and flat. So what we're gonna do today is we are going to take number one and this one, that we will call number two for now, but that is not going to be its name. Um, so we're gonna take number one and this one up to the wood shop where we buy our woods and um, they wanted to see number one up there. They wanted to see what I made out of their piece of mahogany. Um, and then we're gonna take this one up there because they have a planer up there. So 
They told me they'll run boards through the planer for me for like eight dollars. So uh, that'll save me hours and hours of sanding. So I'm gonna go ahead and get ready to go up there and uh, we're gonna go check out the wood store. Hopefully they'll let me film in there so you guys can see it too. So let's, uh, let's head out to the wood store. Well, unfortunately, I was not able to film at the lumber store. Um, the person I usually deal with there was actually out on lunch when I went there, of course, because it was around noon, so I didn't really consider that. Um, but even though I wasn't able to film, we did get our board nice and smoothed down. Now, the, uh, the old school guy that, that works there, I guess one of the owners who was there at the time, um, actually recommended instead of running this through a planer which can cause some tear out on the end of the boards what the hell get out of here get out of here get out of here big ass fly big ass fly like that uh he actually recommended running it through the drum sander instead so we gave it about 10 passes through the drum sander about five on each side going like that oomp, 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 oomp. And uh, it came out really nice. So the drum sander runs an 80 grit sandpaper. So this is smoothed down pretty much perfect to an 80 grit. So we're gonna go over it. There are some little imperfections on some of the sides which will fill in. Uh, the best way I found to fill these little imperfections in is actually fill in, you put some of the sawdust in from the board into the imperfection and then throw the wood glue over it, let it cure and then sand that down. And then you really can't even tell where the imperfection was to begin with. So that's a really cool trick I learned. So we'll be filling in some little imperfections on this board. I'm sure you can, let me see if I can find one here. Like right there, you see that little imperfection? We'll get those little things like that filled in and fixed that just kind of happen. Uh, so we'll get those filled in and fixed, let them dry, and then tomorrow we'll get back down here and we'll get that sanded back down with an 80 grit to get the glue off, and then we'll go over it with a 120 grit and a 220 grit. And the 220 will be our finished grit. So we'll get this sanded down to a finished grit, and then we will um, work on getting the frame built. You see what we're dealing with over here today but that's all right it doesn't affect us down here we can still get our work done <laughs> all right so the board's been drying up overnight again all the glue has dried all of our little spots have been fixed uh, time to get back to sanding get all of our glue spots like this off of here so again we're gonna go 80 grit 120 grit, 220 grit. Then we're gonna start working on the frame. I already started cutting up some of the pieces that we're gonna use for the frame. We'll take a look at those. So over here we took some of our maple and we cut it into three quarter inch by three quarter inch perfect squares. And it's long enough to go all the way around the chessboard, each piece. So we have four of those. And I took a piece of mahogany and I cut it into these four little strips. What we're gonna do with these is we're gonna cut grooves into what is gonna be the top of each one of these pieces of maple and we're gonna inlay a piece of that mahogany in here. And then we're gonna sand it smooth and then we're gonna put it right an edge on it and that's gonna be our frame for this one. Now it is time for clue number two. 
for the name of this chessboard. Let's review clue number one. Clue number one was in reference to the types of wood being used. They are African mahogany and hard maple. Clue number two is the name of this board will have the same name as a very popular candy. <laughs> So there's your first two clues for what the name of this board is going to be. Have you figured it out yet? Leave your guess in the comments below. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get ready to start sanding. What we're going to use to do this is the sanding sleds that I've made. So I have two of them. One is an 80 grit, one is a 120 grit. This is the 80 grit one. It's just a piece of wood, a couple handles on it, and a piece of sandpaper on it. So that's our 80 grit one. After we get it back down to the 80 grit, which we're just getting the glue off, we'll go to our 120 grit one. So same thing. I got the numbers written on them of what grit they are. So we'll just get back to work. No, you know what, actually, I think we're gonna do the grooves and these first and get these glued up, get the inlays in them and get them glued up. And then we'll start sanding. Uh, that way, the, while these are drying, we can be sanding, and then by the time we're done sanding, these will be dry. We can sand these, get them on the board, and then work about, and work on getting our edges on them. So let's uh, get our inlays in these. We'll go over how we're going to do that. So basically what we're going to be doing here is using our router table with our quarter inch straight bit here. And we're going to have it about a little bit higher than that. Uh, just close to the depth of the maple we're using. So we'll get it pretty close to that depth. And then we're going to run. It's going to take two passes because the, the wood is a little bit wider than the bit. So it's going to take two passes with our guide board moved out just slightly to get the exact right depth. Uh, I did a couple test runs last night. But basically what we'll do is we'll get, the, get it set up. We'll get a rail here to keep our, our pieces in the right position, and then we'll just run them through the router bit. So I did this a couple times last night, and uh, this is what I got. And this is pretty much perfect. The, the wood goes right in there, just like this. And that makes our inlay. I keep the depth a little bit less than the dip depth of the wood that way I don't have any low spots I can sand high spots but you can't really get rid of the low spots so you want to make sure that your wood is going to be higher than your main piece of wood when it goes in the inlay that's basically how this is going to work and we're going to make a really cool frame this way so I'm going to go ahead and get started on getting these grooves cut So this is the first cut on the first strip. Again, the pieces of wood are just a tiny bit wider than these strips. So I'm gonna do all four of them where the plate is now. Move the plate ever so slightly out and then run all four of them again so we get the right width for these. So I'm gonna cut the camera off to conserve the battery, get the rest of these cuts done, and then when we come back, we'll get the inlays put together. our grooves cut got all of our strips sanded down so they will fit in their grooves perfectly uh, as you can see there's just a little bit of a height difference between the inlay and the main piece of wood just like I wanted all the way across so it can be sanded down perfectly evenly so basically now these just kind of slide in and out of here just like they did on our tester so we're going to get these glued up next, take the strips out, get some glue in there, get the strips back in, clamp them down, and then while these are drying, we'll get back over here and start sanding this bad boy again. So let's get this glue up going. All 
right, we got our strips all done. They're just finished drying now. I left them clamped up for about 10 or 15 minutes. Uh, as you can see, I was running sawdust over the top of them as I was gluing them in. That was to fill in any imperfections, any tiny little gaps that may be in there. Looks like it did the job wonderfully. Uh, this is the same technique I use on the boards when there's any gaps in there, which is what we're getting ready to sand out, and it works great. Uh, just helps keep it look perfect. Um, I took them out of the clamps because I didn't want them gluing together because some glue did leak over onto the sides. But uh, they clamp down well. They're drying. They look good. And uh, my first inlay. Disclaimer. I'm not a professional. I just started doing this stuff. So I'm sure the way I'm doing this may not line up to the way the professionals do it. But I'm just learning. I'm kind of doing things my way, seeing how it feels. And this is my first inlay, and I think it's going to turn out really good. Everything's going perfect with it so far, so I don't see why it wouldn't. So, yeah. All right. Now, before we get back to sanding the actual board, I glued these two pieces of wood together last week and haven't had a chance to sand these flat yet. And these two pieces of wood are for me to clamp to the, to the um, work desk, to the workstation, and then to be able to clamp clamps on the workstation to keep the board in place as I sand it. So... This is another quote unquote jig for chess boards, which is basically just going to be a nice flat surface for me to sand on top of because the uh, surface of the workstation is not flat. Uh, well, I mean, it's level and everything, but you know, glue and solder and dirt. And so we're going to have this to do all of our sanding on when it comes to that point of every uh, board. So I'm going to get this thing sanded up real quick and then we'll throw the board on there and we'll start getting that sanded up. <music> So, got our flattening board all flattened out. It took me about a good 30 minutes to do that. Um, it wasn't exactly easy, but I got it done. It's nice and flat and square now. Uh, now we have our chess board clamped onto that. We have that clamped to the workstation with these two clamps. And then we have the chess board clamped to that board with these two pieces of wood and these three clamps. These two holding it down, this one holding it together. So that board's not going anywhere. So now we can run our sled on there get to sanding that and getting that smooth on both sides again and then we'll be ready to put a, a danish oil rub on this and then we'll work on uh getting the frame built so i'm gonna get back to sanding this and uh see you when it's done Got the uh, top and bottom sanded down to a 220. What I did was I did the 80 grit sled, so I got it nice and smooth, all the glue off. Then I did the 120 grit sled, then I did the 120 grit palm sander, and then I did the 220 grit palm sander. So both sides are uh, both sides are sanded completely smooth to a 220 grit. And then what you just saw me finish in there was I was uh, squaring up all of my edges to make sure all of my edges are completely flat and completely square. I can throw my square on here anywhere and it's completely perfect. So this thing's completely square. It's sanded all the way down to a 220 grit so it's ready for some Danish oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this area cleaned up and then we'll get some Danish oil on this joker and then we're gonna call it quits for the day. Let that Danish oil set in overnight and then tomorrow we'll get to uh, sanding our frame and getting it attached and getting that finished up and then we're going to have a completed chessboard. So I'm going to get this mess cleaned up, get everything out of the way, and then we'll get some Danish oil on this bad boy and we'll really see what it's going to look like. Yeah! We got everything cleaned up. Let's get some Danish oil on that bad boy. Like I said, we're gonna let that sit overnight, soak in, dry, maybe come down here in an hour or two, apply a second coat, maybe even a third coat, and then we'll let that dry overnight. 
and then tomorrow we'll work on getting the frame. So let's uh, get this Danish oil on here and see the true colors of this beautiful wood we're working with. What's the name of the board again? Clue number one, African mahogany and hard maple. Clue number two, the same name as a famous candy. I'll give you clue number three later. Man glitter on the lens. We don't call it sand dust, saw dust. We call it man glitter. All right, so let's get the Danish oil on. So unfinished side, finished side, unfinished, finished. So we really brought out the color in these grains. The mahogany looks beautiful, shines and shines. So again, I let that dry for like an hour, come down, throw a second on, let it dry for another hour, come down, throw a third on, flip it over, do that again. So I'll be down here off and on for the rest of the night. Just getting coats of Danish oil on here because I want it on both sides. And then uh, we'll let it cure for the rest of the night. Get in here tomorrow and get this framework and get this thing finished up. And then I'll let you know what the name of it is. So, all right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.